Supper. It's such a simple time. In Luke's gospel, Luke is the only one who records, strangely enough, this particular day and this particular event as it unfolds here. In Luke chapter 2, down to verse 6, we read, And so it was, that while they were there in Bethlehem, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard, as it had been told unto them. Just a few verses in our Bible to tell the birth of the greatest man who would ever live. Of course, to you and I, we know he is much more than a man. Such a Simple little house for him to be born in, if you would. Born out there with the stables. Let's talk for just a moment about some of these peoples involved on that night. The shepherds in the field. This is probably the same field that uh, when you read the story of Ruth, remember? She went out into the field of Boaz and gleaned. Boaz was a very wealthy man in this little town that you and I now call Bethlehem. This is where he and Ruth, the great-grandparents of the King David himself, David himself as a boy probably watched his father's sheep in this very field living in those same little caves, shelter at night as they watched over. David would tell the king of how a lion once approached his sheep and how he was able to slay that lion there in probably these very fields. These ancient fields, which knew both the Old Testament and would come to know also the New Testament, they have seen many great people walk upon those fields. But I don't suppose any of the inhabitants of those fields are as popular or as famous to you and to me as these nameless shepherds. None of them, not a single shepherd is given a name in this story. The angel himself is only referred to as the angel. I wonder to myself why that might be. Why is it not that God said, oh, and while Joseph and Peter were out in the field watching their sheep, doesn't tell us. To history, the names of these shepherds are lost. All we know 
is that there were shepherds. We don't even know how many of them there were. Only that there were shepherds watching over their sheep by night when the angel came. But I suppose it's good. Because it allows us somehow, maybe through their eyes, to insert ourselves into this picture. I wonder why it was to this little town of Bethlehem and not to the large city of Jerusalem that stood up on a hill just two miles away. Actually six miles from the very gates. Why not to the king? Why not to the royal court? Why not to the high priest who was probably that very night burning incense there in the temple itself? Why not to them? Oh, an angel came to Zechariah while he was in the temple, remember? Just some months earlier, maybe a year or so earlier, Zechariah was told in that very temple that he himself would become a father when he was very late in years, we're told, and his wife well past bearing. Yet the angel came into the temple and said to him, Behold, you will bring forth a son and you will name him John. So it must be possible then, it must be capable for the angel to appear to the high priest and to say to him, listen, Jesus is born in Bethlehem. I want you all to order things right, to get things straight, to prepare his way. But he didn't go to the high, didn't go to the mighty, didn't go to the rich, didn't go to the powerful, didn't even go to the popular didn't even go to the named. But rather he appeared to shepherds in a field watching over their sheep by night. Common. Poor. Jesus who would preach, who would say to John, tell them that the poor hear the gospel preached unto them. Those same poor that night were the ones who received the very message that Christ is born. Behold, I give you good tidings, which shall be to all, the rich and the poor alike, to all people. Good tidings. Humble shepherds. This one who would preach the virtue of humility to you and to me. The one who would say, Blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God made sure that it was the poor on his first night, on the night of his birth, that it was those poor who heard his message preached. Shepherds in a field. Oh, nobody important. I don't suppose anybody spoke with them. You know, for the most part, these shepherds probably didn't even own those sheep. They weren't rich the rich sheep owner was probably at home comfortable in his bed. These were the hired servants who had the bitter job of fighting the cold and watching over the sheep and protecting them. Just simple men. Just common people. Just ordinary folks. That's why it's so fitting when the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. These are whosoever's. No name. Just whosoever. Whosoever happened to be in that field. I didn't know that God directed any particular shepherd to be there that night. As we were told in the story of Mary and Joseph that they must travel to Bethlehem, these men were already there. It wasn't because of the decree of Caesar Augustus that they appeared here. They lived here. Were they expecting anything great and grand to come of that night? No. They probably, as they left home, kissed their wives goodbye, patted their children on the head and headed out, were probably grumbling and complaining because another cold night would have to be spent in the field watching over some sheep. A day like any other day became a day like unlike any other day. In just the turn of a moment. 
from watching over their sheep to staring up at an angel. Any day. God could enter into our lives in some grand and marvelous way. The angel. Not an angel, but the angel. There's two ways to look at this, why they use the term the angel. One is that this is probably the very same angel that came to Mary and said to her nine months earlier, you're going to bear a son and you're going to call his name Jesus. Probably the same angel who came to Joseph and said to him, Joseph, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that holy thing which is conceived in her is of God. Maybe that's why they said the angel. But you know, there's also a greater possibility than that. The angel of the Lord in the Old Testament is an Old Testament reference to Jesus himself. Whenever you read your Old Testament and it says the angel of the Lord, that's always an Old Testament reference to Jesus, a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ. It's possible that this angel is Christ himself coming to tell those shepherds about his own birth just before he entered into this world. The last time he would be glorious. The last people who would ever see him without the scars in his hands in glory. When he returns home, he would bear the scars of our redemption. But here he was, the Son of God, announcing his own birth. Possible. The title, The Angel of the Lord, could mean that this was Christ himself that appeared to these angels on that night. Shortly before. And then as they leave him here, and they see him in his grand and glorious appearance, surrounded by all the heavenly host, which do nothing but praise him in all of heaven, and suddenly this image is transformed as they now look down. They go from looking up at this glorious heavenly body to looking at this little baby. The angel. The angel. The messenger. The message. That's really the grand thing here. The message that was given. Behold, he would say, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. This is the word gospel. The good news. The glad tidings. That's the very word, the gospel of Matthew. The good news that Matthew had to share. The gospel according to Mark. The good news that Mark had to share. Oh, the gospel of St. Luke, the good news, the glad tidings that Luke wanted to share. The gospel according to John, the glad tidings, the good news that John wanted to share. And the angel comes out and he says, behold, I too have a gospel. I too have a gospel. I too have glad tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior. A Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This gospel, which was preached to simple men, has continued now from the words of this angel through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John unto the years through you and I have presently become these very angels which share this very same gospel. When we say to someone, let me share with you good news. Let me share with you glad tidings of great joy which shall be to all men. For unto you is born, at least in our hearts, Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord. Christ. It's an Old Testament word. 
David himself used it a lot when you read the book of Psalms. Starting as early as Psalm 2. David, in your Old Testament, you read the word and you'll come across a word that says anointed. The anointed of God. That's what the word Christ means. It means the anointed. The anointed one is the Messiah, the promised Redeemer. Way back to the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3.15. The promise was made. That Eve, woman, you would bring forth a son. Who would redeem. You would bring forth a son who will bring these people back to God. In Genesis 3.15 we had the promise of a savior given. Finally the angel preaches it on that night. And says, for unto you, great news is preached. God finally kept his promise. The promise that he made to Adam and Eve. The promise that he made to Abraham. The promise that he gave to Moses. The promise that he gave to the saints of the Old Testament. The promise that he made to all those prophets. The promise that he made to King David. To all of those that God has made the promise. You are seeing it. Christ, the anointed of God, the called one, the special one of God, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Christ. Christ, the anointed, the Lord Jehovah. Jehovah. God of the Old Testament. The God that everyone from Malachi on back we're praying to. Jehovah. When he would speak with Moses. When he would speak to Abraham. When he would say to them, tell them, Jehovah. The Lord has sent you. Oh, they all trembled and they all feared at the name of Jehovah. And there he was, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the creator of all of heaven and earth, held in the tender arms of his mama. The one whose voice brought into existence everything you and I know. That night, his cry could be heard as the shepherds approached. A sweet voice to his mama. A voice that could call into existence all that you and I know of. cry to his mama that night. Christ, the Lord, the creator. That's how he was known. Tell them I am has sent you. I am is an Old Testament reference to the creator. So that Jesus, this little boy, this baby, when he grows up and they say to him, who are you? To tell us. Remember when he cleared the temple? By what authority do you clear out this temple? I am. And they said crucify him because he's just made himself God. Tell them I am has sent you. When John would write his gospel he would use that phrase seven different times. I am the bread of life. I am the water of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John would share with us that I am on several occasions. And here was the great I am. 
Oh, I suppose when those shepherds looked, and they were told, you know, look at, listen to this message. You will find the babe. You will find the babe. No great mess, uh, uh, mystery. The angel didn't come and say, behold, this night I bring you glad tidings of great joy for unto you a Savior is born. I hope you all can find him. No, you will find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And the shepherds came with haste. And they found it even as the angel said. They knew this was the child because he was in a manger. And they found Mary, his mother, and Joseph watching over him. And they found this little baby wrapped in strips of cloth, swaddling clothes. They found exactly what the angel said they would find. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And they found it even as the angel said. And we have found it to be even as the angels have said. We who have received Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior have discovered that indeed he is the God of all creation. That he is to us all that we need. He is to us Lord. He is to us Christ. He is to us God of very God. And he was given to us. In such a simple and humble way. Nothing new about babies being born. Babies have been born since the days of the Garden of Eden. Children's cries have split the night for thousands and thousands of years that man has been upon this planet. My wife and I five times we've been through this very same scene. When I want Mary and they approached that river and she splashed her ankles in that water. That common sight probably to every woman who's ever bore a child to get those swollen ankles cooled off. Nothing new. Nothing fanciful. A very common sight. I suppose other children that very night were being born. Because Herod said, go to his army, go to Bethlehem and destroy all the children two years and under because I don't know which one he might be. They were probably in this town because they were brought from such great distances. There were probably, oh, maybe 20, 30, 40 babies born this very night. Yet the angel didn't go into any other home. The star didn't visit any other house. It went to this one. Wasn't a house at all. Wasn't even a barn. It was just a stable. And in that stable there was a manger. And in that manger laid a baby. Which we celebrate to this very day. Because he wasn't like any other child. This was the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This, our Redeemer. The shepherds came with haste, and they found it even as the angel said. But in the joy of that moment, We're told that Mary kept and pondered all these things in her heart. She would be told in just eight days when she takes the baby to the temple to have him circumcised. That he would be given. His life would be forfeited for the salvation of many in Israel. And a spear that would pierce his heart would also pierce her soul. 
with the joy of this manger, we remind ourselves that it is but a stepping stone. I wonder if Christ, as Christ was on the cross, I wonder if he didn't as he was looking down, as his life passed before his eyes, if he didn't think about that manger scene. If perhaps he didn't recall those shepherd crowds. Could he remember the three wise men that would come? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They would anoint him with myrrh upon his death. They would wrap his body in what was once a gift to him. Even in the manger, even in the happiness and the joy of his birth, was a foreshadow of his cross. He came not to be born, he came not to be celebrated, he came to die. So that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. I wonder if those shepherds, through the years, as they had grown up there, and as he passed through so close to their hometown, I wonder if those shepherds now as old men heard him preach. And I wonder if those shepherds as old men had the opportunity to see the Lamb of God slain for the sins of the world. Those shepherds who had raised sheep to be sacrificed in the temple helped to raise that fame of that baby who would be slain outside the city for the sins of all men. We see the shadow of the cross even in the manger because after all this is Christ the Lord. That's what the angel said. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. Christ. The Lord. And Mary kept all these things. And pondered them. In her heart. Let's all stand. That we too might ponder for a moment. These things. In our heart.